Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about adding custom bits to the tool library in Carveco. Once we get into Carveco, there's a couple ways to get to this tool directory. The easy way is to select tool paths and then this folder icon down here is the tool database. And if we open that, we're presented with this uh, tree of the different default tools. For today, I want to talk about adding taper bits. And since the taper bits I use are, uh, they have a imperial shaft and metric callouts for the radius of the tip, I throw them in this other directory down here at the bottom called the custom library. In this custom library, you can add your own tools or even groups of tools, like how these trees branch down from the other directory. I simply add the tools directly to this custom library. And today, I'm going to add a new tool in here. To make the tools uh, flow together quite well, I'm going to go ahead and just copy an existing name and add the tool from scratch. But I'm going to paste in that name and I'm going to add a quarter millimeter radius tapered ball bit with an eighth inch shaft. Now it's not ball nose, this is, this is the wrong selection here. Instead I want to choose radius engraving and I get this tapered bit here with a radius tip. So I can enter the diameter and I can either do it in metric or in inches here. And you can actually toggle back and forth between those if you choose to. Um, the half angle for this is a 17.5 degree angle and my tip radius is 0.25. After entering this information up here, it calculates the flute length for you. So it tells you what C is. So you really wouldn't want your step down to be greater than that. So I'll just set it at four. And for my uses, it's really going to override that and do full depth. Because what I use these taper bits for is my finishing passes on 3D relief carvings. So if it's already done the roughing, it'll come through with this tapered bit and do the full depth pass. So the next thing to set is a step over, which is you can either enter as a raw number or the percentage of twice the radius or the diameter of this. And for mine, I usually do about 30% of that radius. So it does end up with a slight scallop after carving, but uh, with a quarter millimeter radius, it's virtually un unnoticeable. So then the spindle speed, you can set it in here. Uh, if your tooling has a max speed, you're gonna wanna stick to that. Uh, for the feed rates on these, I I'm running this as for a finishing pass only. I've already roughed everything out, so I can actually go quite fast. And you can add notes about the bit here, um, like where you bought it from, or the if you're buying off Amazon, you can put the Amazon stock ID number in there for restocking those bits. And that is it. Our taper bit is now fully entered. We can press OK, and now it's been added to the library here. And now that we're in here, one of the things I also want to do is reorganize these. So you can actually just drag it up above the one of others and it will reorder them. And now I've reordered them based on the radius of the tip of these tapered bits from smallest to largest. Another trick in this tool library as well is you can just copy an existing one and then edit those features. And that's what you did up here with these is I copied over uh, one of these other bits. by selecting this copy button here and it made two different entries. And I could go in and edit whichever one I want by changing this information in here. So if I change that 2.5 and my step down here And now I've just copied that three to a new entry and edited, edited the information for that one. 